Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about E. So you will need your notes, a calculator, pen and or pencil, and we are going to be making two graphs today. So just so you have a heads up on that one. All right. Now you guys don't have to really write this down. Remember we talked about pi a lot. Now when we talk about pi, pi represents a number. It represents a number that's approximately 3.14. Now if I wanted, I could go through and simplify these expressions containing pi. So here's the first one. In order to do this, I'm going to put my 2 to both of these so I get 5 squared times pi squared. And I know 5 squared is 25, so I'd have 25 pi squared if I wanted to simplify this one. I could also do the same with this one. I can go ahead and simplify it. First thing, I'm going to simplify 15 over 20, which is going to be 3 fourths. The next thing I would have to do is simplify my exponents for pi. So I'd take 5 minus a negative 1, and that's going to turn into a positive. So I'd have pi to the 6th power. Now that's talking about pi, something that we're very, very familiar with. Today what we're going to talk about is another wonderful, wonderful number. And it is called Euler's number, but we just represent it as E. And E, ladies and gentlemen, is approximately 2.71828. So please make sure you have that down. You need to make sure you know what E is. E is Euler's number. Okay, E is one of the most important numbers in mathematics, along with I for imaginary numbers, and pi. Okay, so make sure you have E written down in your notes. Now this next slide, ladies and gentlemen, please don't write down. This is where E comes from. So remember back a few days ago we were talking about exponential growth and this is our formula for exponential growth. Now we can do by one year, a month, we can do by a day, by an hour, by a minute. Now when we talk about E, that's going down to every second. So we're breaking it down extremely. So we're growing over every second. This I do need you guys to write down, please. We are going to be simplifying the expression. So here we're going to use the same rules of exponents as we have been in the past. So when we do this, we're going to take 2 times 6, and we're going to get 12. And then we're going to take e to the third and e to the fifth. Now when I have exponents, I add them. So I'm going to get e to the third, or excuse me, second power. So I'm adding negative 3 plus 5. If I continue on here, I am going to go ahead and do this. So I have to simplify this. First thing I'm going to do is my numbers. So 4 goes into 24 six times. So I'm going to get 6. And now I have to simplify my e's. I need to subtract. So I have to take 8 minus 5, which gives me 3. Now, if I wanted to evaluate each one, I could type this in my calculator. It's very important to you guys that you know where the E button is on your calculator because we're going to be using that a lot. So for this first one, I would just type in 12 times E to the second power. And I'm going to get approximately 88.7. You can do the same thing here. I can take 6 times e to the third, and I'm going to get approximately 120.5. Okay? So you need to know where your e button is on your calculator, ladies and gentlemen. All right, moving on to our last one where we're simplifying this expression. Same rules apply for rules of exponents. So there's a 1 here, so I have to put my 3 here and here. So I'm going to get 4 to the third power times e. Now 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm going to have 6x. Only thing I can do to simplify this one is 4 to the third power is 64. I'm going to keep it as e to the 6x. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my simplified expression. All right. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, what else can I do with the number e? 
Well, next thing we're going to do with E is we are going to graph using our natural base E. So make sure we have this down. Our equation is f of x equals e to the x. Now, if you don't like f of x, ladies and gentlemen, you can rewrite it as y equals e to the x power. Now, just like we have been doing, we're going to use our base of negative 2 to 2. And we're going to plug these into our calculator. So this is where you need to know where e is at on your calculator. So we're going to have e to the negative 2. And that is approximately point. 1, 4. Then I'd have e to the negative 1, which is approximately 1, or excuse me, 0.37. Continue on, I'm going to have e to the 0 power. Now, anything to the 0 power is just 1. Then I'll have e to the first power, which is approximately 2.72. And then I'll have e to the second power, which is approximately 7.2. Three, nine. Now what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to graph this. Now this is very important that we remember that we are going to have an asymptote. So our asymptote, we're going to find the same way. We're not adding or subtracting, so it's going to be y equals 0. That's very, very important. So if I come here, put in y equals 0, I'm not going to be passing this line. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph, so I go negative 2, 0.14, negative 1, 0.37, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2 is 7.39, so here is my graph. Now, we've been working with a lot of exponential growth and exponential decay. So if I look at this graph, if you read it from left to right, it's getting larger. So this is an exponential growth. That's very important. Our other things that we like to talk about, domain and range. Our domain, if I can pick any x value that I want, we're going to get x such that x equals all real numbers. And our range, since we have an asymptote and we can never touch it is going to be y such that y is greater than, and our asymptote here is 0, so it's going to be greater than 0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our last example of the day. We have another graph here. Now, this graph is a little bit more complex. I have y equals e to the negative x plus 1. So if I graph this one, I'm just going to use my base again for x, negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to plug these in. So if I plug this in, I'm going to have e. Now it's like this negative is like saying negative 1. So I have parenthesis negative 1 times the negative 2 plus 1. So I put that in my calculator. It's kind of like saying e squared plus 1, and I'm going to get approximately... 8.39. Do the same thing here. I'm going to have e to the negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1. And I get approximately 3.72. Same thing with 0. e to the negative 1 times 0 plus 1. So I'm going to get approximately 2 here. Now I have e to the negative 1 times 1 plus 1 is approximately 1.37. And last but not least, I have e to the negative 1 times 2 plus 1 is approximately 1.14. Now here, same idea as before. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, what is added or subtracted behind my e value is going to be my asymptote. So once again, we have y equals 1. So make sure we graph that right here. y equals 1. And now we're going to graph. So I have negative 2, 8.39, about right there. Negative 1, 3.72. 0, 2, 1, 1.37, 2, 1.14. Now, if we look at this graph, ladies and gentlemen, 
If we read it from left to right, we see that we're decreasing. So this one is a DK. All right, so this is the DK, and now we're going to end with our domain and range. Domain, once again, ladies and gentlemen, on this one, I can pick any value that I wish. So it's going to be all real numbers. My range has to come close but never touch my asymptote. So it's Y such that Y is greater than 1. Okay, there's our last example for the day. Now, this is the last thing I need you guys to get into your notes, please. When we're graphing with E, it is a growth when our exponent is positive. So like our first example, we had a positive exponent. And it is a decay when our exponent is negative. So that was like our second example that we did. So please make sure you get this into your notes. It will come in handy. All right, that's all I have for you wonderful people today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you later. Bye.